Hello and welcome to this video where you are going to see how to add syslogs as a data source in your McAfee sim so you can start receiving events from your syslog devices. Most McAfee sim deployments require at least one data source of the syslog type since a variety of devices such as network gear, firewalls and Unix and Linux servers use syslog as their logging mechanism. In the McAfee sim, the component responsible for gathering events, logs, and flows is called the event receiver, which we will call receiver for short from now on. The receiver can run on the same box as the ESM component, as it is the case for some of the sim combo appliances, or it can run on its own dedicated virtual or hardware appliance. You can have multiple receivers depending on your needs. And the product that the receiver is receiving or collecting data from is called the data source. So in this video, we are going to add syslogs as a data source. First, we are going to configure our syslog device to directly send our logs to our event receiver. Then we'll see what we need to do if you are using a syslog relay, such as syslog ng or Splunk, to get the data into the sim. But before we do anything on the McAfee sim, we need to make sure that our syslog device is configured to forward events to our sim event receiver. In this video, we are using a Linux client. But the principles are the same for other type of syslog devices. You will just have to check for the exact syntax that you need to use for your specific devices. So let's go to our Linux box. We need to find the file that holds the syslog configuration. On our Linux system, we are running Debian. So for us, that file is called rsyslog.conf and is located in the etsy folder. Please keep in mind that if you are running another version of Unix or Linux, the file name and location might differ. Another common name for this file is syslog.conf. Let's edit our rsyslog.conf file. And we don't see a line that would indicate log forwarding to our receiver. So not seeing the IP address for the SIM event receiver is a good clue that that syslog has not been configured to forward events to it. So let's add one. It will look something like this. Star dot star at at and the IP address of our event receiver column, the port number on which we are going to forward the logs. Star.store is telling us to forward all logs to the IP address of our SIM. Here again, the syntax will be slightly different depending on your version of Unix or Linux. We'll save the file. And we will restore the syslog service so our changes take effect. Now we're ready to add our syslog device in the McAfee sim, so let's log into our sim console. From the system tree, we're going to select the event receiver on which we want to add the syslog data source. In our case, we only have one. Let's click the Add Data Source button from the Action Toolbar located in the upper left corner of the interface. The Add Data Source window opens. For Data Source Vendor, select Unix. For data source model, select Linux, and we'll give it the name of our choice and that will be used to identify this data source. Then we enter the IP address of our Linux box. And let's set up the appropriate time zone, the time zone in which the data source resides. It's important to select the appropriate time zone so the events that are generated are not discarded because they are either too old or in the future. A dialog box will open warning that the policy rollout will be required for this data source to properly function. Click yes. The dialog box opens offering us to roll out the policy to the new created data source. Let's click OK. Once completed, a dialog box will open indicating the successful rollout of the new policy. Click close. To confirm that our data source has been added, let's browse our device tree. If we click on our receiver, we can see that our Linux data source has been added. 
Now let's see for getting events. To see the events specifically coming from a new Linux data source, just select it in the system tree. It might take a couple of minutes since it takes about 10 minutes by default for the ESM to pull the events from the receiver. But we can accelerate that last step by asking the ESM to pull those events right now. To do that, click on the Get Events and Flow icon in the top left corner of the console. The Get Events and Flow window opens. Click Start. The ESM will start downloading events. When it's done, it will tell you how many events were downloaded. Click Close. And click the Refresh icon in the top middle of the SIM console. And now we can see syslog events from our Linux box in the console. Now let's see what you need to do if you're using a syslog relay or syslog server such as syslog ng or splunk and how you need to configure it to forward events to the same receiver. The catch is that if all you do is add your syslog ng data source like we did previously, all your syslog events will show up with the same IP address, the IP address of your syslog server, not the IP address of the system that initially generated the event. In order to avoid this, we will need to add our syslog ng data source as a relay, and then we will need to add the original devices that send their logs to our syslog server. That way, our event receiver will be able to split the stream of events into their original IP addresses. We will see how to do that in a minute. But first, let's add the syslog ng server as a data source. The steps are similar to what we've seen before. From the system tree, we're going to select the event receiver on which we want to add the syslog ng data source. Let's click the Add Data Source button from the top left corner of the interface. And again, as a data source vendor, we'll select Unix. As the data source model, we'll select Linux ASP. And we will call our data source syslog ng. Now the important step. In the syslog relay field, select syslog ng. Then uh, select the time zone. Let's enter the IP address for the syslog ng server. And uh, we can enter or look up the host name if we'd like. It is not required. We'll click Yes to the Policy Rollout dialog box and click OK to roll out the policy to the newly created data source. Once complete, a dialog box will indicate that the rollout was successful. Click Close. Now let's add our original syslog devices. Let's browse our system tree and click on our event receiver. And let's click on the Add Data Source button at the top left corner of the console. And the Add Data Source window opens. As a data source vendor, we will select the vendor that we have. In our case, we have a Juniper router. So we'll select Juniper as the data source vendor. Then we will select our router as the source model. We'll keep the defaults. Let's give it a name. And that could be any name you want. Let's enter the IP address. Let's select the correct time zone to make sure that we get the events. And let's click OK. We're going to say yes to the offer to apply the data source settings. And then OK to rolling out the new policies. And then we'll close the window that tells us that it was successfully applied. And now we can see a new data source in our list of data sources. And repeat that process for all of the additional syslog data sources that you have. We've just seen how to add a syslog data source and how to configure and add syslog data sources when you use a syslog server. Thank you for watching.